Pokemon Nuzlocke are all about strategy. To perform the perfect Nuzlocke run, you have to know your encounters, the team you are facing, maybe even the answer for a puzzle made for kids so you don't spend 10 minutes on it. <clears throat> Scrap that though. I decided to make my Pokemon Black Nuzlocke as chaotic as possible. How you ask? By randomizing everything. So we start our run with our new best buddy Mako. Out of the three options I could pick from, this definitely was the best choice for the early game. It has a base attack stat of 18, level 5, and I just sound like I know what I'm talking about. Um, isn't it time to battle? Oh yeah, my rivals. These guys are Bianca and Sharon, and unlike me, they didn't get blessed with great starters, so I wiped the floor with both of them. After this devastating loss, Sharon ran too much to the Pokemon Research Lab, where we got our Pokedex, which is cool and all, but we're definitely not finishing it. After watching an unnecessary catching tutorial, we got our first Pokeballs and it was time. The first encounter. Cricketune! Hold up. I mean, it's not the worst. A crit on our first encounter. We might be in trouble. After arriving in Akumala town and enjoying the great music, I immediately have to witness propaganda. After this gets this guy throws a crazy rant, some guy that has the same green hair color as him walked up to me. He kinda looks like his name would start with an N. Oh, yeah that works. He's telling me my Pokemon can talk and I show him that they can. With these hands. After getting defeated, and walks up rambling about Pokemon never being perfect beings as long as they're not free. That just sounds like loser talk to me, okay? Right after, my mom gives me some new shoes. And we catch a an alligator named Gatorade. With our new fully evolved starter Pokemon, I don't think someone would even dare to challenge me. Except Bianca. That's right, in this game your so-called friends would randomly jump you when you least expect it. I'm sure the Pokemon company thought, ah, this was really very funny, haha, <laughs> but no worries, cause Gatorade makes sure to take out the trash. Bianca, no offense, but maybe you should've stayed home with a whack ass team. After going to the trainer school real quick, to train with Jaren, we get ourselves a gift Pokemon that changed the run forever. You see, in a normal version of Pokemon Black, you get yourself one of the three elemental apes based on the starter you chose. In this randomized version, dude, the Muna encounter is Kyogre. Yeah, give me the Kyogre. That's right, a legendary. And trust me, this won't be the last time this run, since I am one of the luckiest Pokemon players on a good day. With their newfound power, I approach the first gym. And although Silent and team wouldn't have been a bad team during a normal run, I have the answer. Well. We beat the first gym, um... Well, we got our first gym badge. And cut, which allowed us to explore new paths and uh... Ooh, false alarm. Anyways, we found some of those Team Plasma Goonies beating up a little Muna. Me and Bianca just couldn't stand for this and had to step up. So although I did all the work here again, I gained a bit more respect for Bianca. For some reason, Getsis teleports to us. How can you even teleport and why are the two of you? I have no idea, maybe I should pay more attention to the plot. But first, encounter time. So we catch ourselves a Cyndaquil. We already got not one but two Jota stars, which is actually crazy. Just as crazy as Charon, who took offense to me destroying his team a few times. This guy always wants to freaking fight, bro. He never greets me and is just like, "Hey, how you doing? Hey, how how were you yesterday?" And now we got legendaries. He still doesn't stand a chance against the answer. And right after this fight, we ran into an encounter that could make my team unstoppable. Bro, this encounter is a Victini. What, uh, bro? What is going on? <laughs> Yo. Yeah, that's right. Victini and Kyogre. How do you even stop this? And adds Vaporeon to the team as well, and calls the Golden State Kyogre because we are unstoppable. So when it came down to getting the second gym, you know I was feeling myself. After sitting through that horribly designed puzzle, we finally meet our second gym leader, Lenora. For this fight, I had to craft a genius plan. A plan so masterful that nobody else could ever think of this. Spamming water pearls with Kyogre. And that's how I got my second gym badge. Well right after getting my badge, Team Plasma pulled up again and straight up robbed Lenora. While she figures all that stuff out, I got other business to attend, aka getting to Castellia City. But little did I know, 
This route will be the toughest challenge I've faced so far. Filled with strong drainers and um, our first death. That was super effective, I didn't like that. I also kind of forgot he was um, a water type. No way that didn't kill. Pixini! Fuck it, we're gonna risk it. Why not? I'm feeling kind of risky today. Well, listen, I know it was my fault, but just I just wanted him to get one kill, okay? That would have been his first, and now he's in the river. Oh yeah, and Gatorade too, I guess. Off to Castalia City, the city of dreams. I rushed to get my next encounter right behind the city, which turned out to be a metatite that I named James. And after finding and interrupting the very secret scene plasma meeting, we proceed to challenge the Castalia gym leader. Berg. There really is nothing to worry about since our Kyogre is literally strong enough to wipe out entire teams on its own. Burp. Okay, really annoying. <laughs> Not even kind, of, just straight up really annoying. Well, I guess there is something to worry about after all. In case you don't know what Parashong does, after your Pokemon has been hit by the move, it just dies in 3 turns. Believe it or not, this is very bad. Burke has 3 Pokemon I have to kill in 3 turns. Because of the typings, that's simply impossible. The answer is there. What am I supposed to do? Well, I guess that works. Because of that one sacrifice from Mr. Flora I got earlier, and one really interesting play by Burke, we were able to get through Burke's gym but no worries. And well, after that interesting gym experience, what could be a better way to go off than fighting my friends for the third time? And while my rifles have definitely leveled up their teams, they aren't really cooking anything against my Kyogre. Sorry, it's just not happening. Just like me, not telling you to subscribe and encountering one of my favorite Pokemon at this point. Gloom. Fun fact, I've actually fallen in love with this Pokemon because of Nuzlocke. Literally every time I've attempted one of these, this Pokemon has been on my team. How does that keep happening? I have no idea. Maybe he's secretly stalking me. Next up, we have one of my least favorite Pokemon of all time. Chikorita. I don't even find the evolutions that bad, it's just I don't like Chikorita. But this is kinda crazy since this means we encountered all three Jota starters in one run. Is there something wrong with my ROM? I mean, legitimate save? Or am I just insanely lucky? Who knows? Too bad this grandpa is not that lucky, since he's getting harassed by Team Plasma members. After taking care of those bosses real quick, the old man grants us a bicycle. So I do what any young man that just got himself a bicycle will do. Right towards the amusement park that this small city has for some reason. There, this end guy decides to take me on a date or something. I mean, the Ferris wheel was cool, I guess, but... Uh, uh, oh yeah, he told me he's the king of Team Plasma. I mean, I think he might be a little delusional, but you know, keep doing your thing. After this weird little incident, I ran into Bianca again, and I feel like I just became part of a conversation I really shouldn't be a part of. Anyways, I caught a Growlit. Now we're at the gym. Now listen, I know I haven't been showing a lot of random trainer battles, but I'm going to be honest. They are really freaking easy. At this point, three badges in, I started getting so bored of them that I literally played random pipe sound effects to keep myself awake. Alright, I got a fighter. I didn't think that was just in my head. <laughs> Maybe the answer was a mistake. And of course, it's time for a routinely rival battle. <sighs> Charing, you suck. Ampharos. Of course the crits, you know? <laughs> of course it crits. Jaren, I was not familiar with your game. Speaking of game, this game for some reason loves me. Maybe it's because my birthday is on the release date of this game or something, but um, we encountered the Sacrum. Remember when we had Victini? Yeah, we just replaced it with a Sacrum, no worries. The team was looking unstoppable and we honestly got a good endgame squad on our hands. Mako the Shapido, leader of the team, our starter, and our heart. I really let that happen. I'll be honest, I got a little overconfident there. This probably was the death that actually hurt me the most so far. After this sad occurrence, we had to replace Mako with a Mandibus that we named Ellie, and later on, added a Lunatone to the squad named Lunala. Superior Moon Pokemon, by the way. Oh, and we got a static encounter Fungus somewhere. Cool. Well, after beating up Team Plasma really quickly, we at least get to challenge the gym. Maybe getting ourselves a badge will finally fully get me over Mako's death. Well, that was at least my mindset going into this. 
Little did I know that there will be one mystery Pokemon who'd introduce me into the Hall of Shame. This is Wobbuffet, and it has one very scary move named Miracoat. Now, Miracoat basically deflects a move that's thrown at Wobbuffet, and I somehow totally forgot about it. Isn't it funny how almost every death so far could have been easily avoided? My luck may be up, but my skill might be at the bottom of the bottom. Just like Clay who's hiding behind trainers that have Wobbuffets at the bottom of his stupid cave. Compared to that Wobbuffet trainer, Clay's team literally did not stand a chance. A Bichotto? What is a bird to a natural disaster? A Gardevoir? Okay, I'll give you some credit for that. And a Snowrunt? And that's how I got my 5th gym badge. But of course, I couldn't get to the gym without Bianca coming over to greet me, could've at least called me beforehand. For this battle I decided to let a new Pokemon take the spotlight. Zaza has the type advantage and is a pretty good Pokemon, what could go wrong? How did this even happen dude? I'm glad we had the answer to ramp through Bianca's team but like, is the rest of my team weak? What if the answer actually goes down, am I screwed? So I decided to get my team on a candy like some honey packs and moved on to Charstone Cave where I encountered one of the factually coolest Pokemon of all time. I'm the source of that. The rest of Charton Cave was filled with Team Plasma members who had sweep without any issues like usual. Exactly, you could, that's not a ground type. Okay, bird. <gasps> but what the? Bro. But there goes one more Jota starter. <laughs> Maybe these Team Plasma members ain't that bad. First, you got a trainer almost killing my Manibus. Next thing you know, yeah, encounter and trainer with a Rayquaza. These might be the best teams I had to face so far. And I still have to find Anne, whose goal apparently is segregation. Dude, that's so uncool. While the fight starts and Anne whips out the Perugly as his point Pokemon, we switches into a Parasect. The Parasect fortunately got one shot by my Mandibus because you know, birds eat insects. Anne pulls out a Lotad which my Mandibus one shots, but then? Why would have been nice? Did you just pull out two low tats? <laughs> Bro, this shit is randomized and he pulled out two of the same Pokemon. This actually should not be possible. Anne's team in the original did not have any duplicate Pokemon in it. So the game randomized two different Pokemon into the same Pokemon? After witnessing that incredibly strange event, we arrive at Miss Strelton City. While I was here, I decided to level up our team by accidentally killing a Scolipede encounter, evolving our final Jota starter, and turning young Simba into a king. Now that we're getting later into the game, the trainers have upped their game by a lot. Legendary Pokemon are more common than ever, so I should actually, you know, try my best to avoid this. So I ring the notification bell and head towards the sick gym. That's all playing teams, which I think is really cool. Skyla starts the fight off with a horsey, it dies, her next Pokemon is a Gengar, which is actually a really strong Pokemon, and there we go, 6 gym badges down, 2 more to go. And now that we're actually entering the late game, I have to look back at the run so far and say, wow it's actually kinda been a breeze so far. And our annual Charon fight proves that once more. Well at least we got a flight from Elder, and at this point I'm not going to lie, I was starting to get bored. Sure, I was winning, but what is a win without any excitement? I got the answer at the start of the game, but he honestly makes it so there is no stress at all times. I wish for a challenge, they will make me jump out of the seat, and you know what they say. You ask, can you sell the seat? Oh shit, okay. That sucks. Um, Bite? Bite will probably just do decent damage. Bite is not effective. That did a lot of damage, relax. Holy shit. <laughs> Bro, no way you... Man, ma you are actually a fucking, a fucking fraud. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, you, you sell out, you fraud. Uh, Centum. Geodude. Bro, bro was stressing me out and shit, and then pulled out a Geodude. Okay, buddy. I almost lost three crucial Pokemon at that trainer battle. Three! Now that I got reminded of how you can take your Nuzlocke for granted, it was time to face off against Bryson. 
This was somehow easier than the random trainer encounter. So we got our 7th gym badge, and the plot started kicking in. You know, like in every Pokemon game. Yeah, it turns out that Anne actually hasn't been 100% delusional the entire time. Anne is the king of Team Plasma. Oh yeah, he also summons Sacron. Anyways, a gym time. It's what I'd like to say, but first the plot wants me to head to the Relic Castle just to meet with Anne's psychopath father. Come on, he's not, he's not really hiding it. And we met up with the rest of the cast to get ourselves the Lightstone, which he used to summon the legendary Pokemon Rash. But unfortunately for us, this stone doesn't really activate for us, but for Bianca instead. What the fuck? She has a restroom! Wait, 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 Bianca, I was not paying attention. Why do you have a restroom? Sh shoddy! Oh well. We all know who the real legendary is here. One was banned from competitive Pokemon and one isn't. And well, after the moss hair bastard threatens me one last time, we finally get to the final gym. There we be by a landslide. Which grants us permission for the ultimate frontier, the Elite Four. And when I tell you this is my favorite Elite Four, I mean it. So with our all new team filled with all-star level Pokemon, I was expecting the fights of the century. Please don't start with the fire type. Azrael. Huge. Mega Drain does what it has to do. Slowking? I don't mind that either. Saza! Okay, that's bad. I even considered switching, god damn it bro. Swagger, how much? Right now, you got a hit right now. Nice. G good job. That was worth it. Fuck, how do I do this? S Why do we have Zen Apple? Okay. I lost Zaza already. Oh, that so sucks. That so sucks. Oh my god, this is, that was such a good read. <gasps> that's such a good read. That kills, that one shots. Mm, that's such a good read. Yo, he has an insane team, but do this not a chance against Kyogre? Oh my, maybe they do. Oh, you can't get crit? Okay, anyways. <laughs> oh, I should have used Ice Beam. Never mind. Should have I should have just killed you. Yo, they did so much damage. I did more though. I did more. Swagger? Uh oh, I don't like that. Don't 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 hit yourself in confusion. Whatever you do, please don't. God damn it. You gotta hit him. You gotta hit him, otherwise we lose. Just killed! Unless I kill him first? Levitate. I'm actually kinda stupid. I'm I'm a different kind of stupid. Yeah, I'm done. Someone is taking damage here. Brown can't be switched, he's done! Yeah, it's already finished! We lost two? Oh my god, these fights are actually the only real hard ones. <laughs> Please start with the fire type, or ground type. Either works, they both work. That works! Hit this. Yes! Uh, yeah, you're done. Dolphin? Yes! Oh, these are good matchups. I hope that was his last. Please tell me that was his last. I'm faster, right? No, I was not, but... Yes, Garchomp, take those. Oh, fuck, you're faster. What did I do? Special attack fell. Garchomp? Mm. It was alright, I guess. When heading up to challenge the champion, it turns out that Anne has already beaten him and somehow gained the power to spawn in a whole castle, which just does not get explained, I think. Maybe he is the real deal. But before challenging him, we update our team one last time, replacing OGs with the new blood. We have a Hexorus named D Wade that we caught a while ago, and Olga rejoins our team once again. Since we don't have any other grass Pokemon, and our last encounter, I was expecting something grand. This was supposed to be the Pokemon that helps us defeat Anne once and for all. And I boxed him. So I resorted to old measures and washed all of Anne's team away. Well, that was, um, disappointing. So disappointing that even Anne's dad decided to call him a disappointment, which I thought was a little mean, so we battled each other next. Too bad he didn't account for D Wade using two Dragon Dances and Dragon Crawling through his entire team. And, well, I finally did it. 
my first Nuzlocke win, which makes my record 1 to 2. I streamed this whole adventure here on YouTube, by the way, so if you would like to be part of the next journey, this is where you can find it. Don't be shy, say hi!